Hello everyone. This is the third video of the series. In the previous video, we discussed the functions of network devices like switches, routers, firewalls, and load balancers in brief. We also discussed these devices in the context of a branch network and how it connects to campus and data center networks. In this video, we'll see the different network vendors and how the devices are managed. Let's get started. In this slide, we have represented the prominent vendors in the market today. We have Cisco, Juniper, Palo Alto, Arista, F5, and others. There are many more, and you can look up additional information in the link shown below. Cisco has the biggest presence among all of them. They have most of the platforms that we discussed before and more. Juniper, Palo Alto, and Arista are almost in the same tier and have presence through most of these devices. F5 and Citrix are mostly known for the load balancers and Fortinet for their firewalls. They do have other devices as well. How are these network devices managed? Each vendor has a different mechanism of accessing the device and configuring them. On the left side, we see the different technology standards like SSH, SNMP, NetConf, CLI, and API, which help the configuration of the devices and syslog NetFlow, SFlow to monitor the devices. Remember, we had discussed IP address in the previous videos. Network administrators will use this IP address to access these devices, be it a switch, router, firewall, or load balancer. Let us understand these technology terms with an analogy. Each of the terms on the left can be compared to a language on the right side meaning each network devices understand same or different set of languages. For example, a Cisco device might understand SSH, SNMP, NetCon, and CLI. And let us say an F5 device or a Juniper device understands SSH, API, and CLI. So you may be wondering, they both support SSH or same language. So what's the deal? Within the language, we know there could be many dialects. For example, in Hindi, People from different parts of India speak different dialects. Similarly, even if Cisco and Juniper understand SSH, the dialect or the configurations they understand might be different from each other. So there is no common language across the network vendors. And even if there is one, like the NetConf, the support for this is very less. This takes us to the third slide, where we can see how the network administrators are struggling to manage a dense network. Let us consider a network with many routers, switches, firewalls, and load balancers from different vendors. And it is very common for businesses to go for a multi-vendor approach to get them a competitive advantage. You can imagine the plight of a network administrator to configure these network devices and monitor them. This can very well be compared to an international classroom where a teacher is trying to teach a bunch of students from different origins. Let's say the classroom has students who speak only Greek, Spanish, Hindi, Italian, Japanese, and Latin. Imagine the situation of a teacher here where he has to know all the different languages and dialects and repeat these lessons to each of these students. The moment a student of different origin joins, the teacher must know the language or dialect teach the new student. This is exactly what a network administrator must go through when dealing with multi-vendor, multi-platform networks. They must know the different configuration commands for each of the network vendors and the way to connect to them. Sometimes the same vendor might have different devices with a different set of commands, which is equivalent to having different dialects. This further complicates the scenario. Let's look at the existing processes and how a network admin manages a network today. For a multi-vendor network, IT resources have to ramp up on each of the vendor commands and they need to keep updating their knowledge to the frequent changes that vendors do. Manual configurations. You know, we know that human processes are error prone and any mistakes may result in network outages. Similarly, with copy paste, there's always a risk of configurations going wrong. The admins might have created templates, but they, let's say, when they do a find and replace and something and something can go wrong, this might result in a network outage as well. 
Admins have started using custom scripts or custom software programs to configure devices. But this is only a stop trap arrangement as this solution does not scale for large networks and frequent customizations will have to be done. Let's take a typical day of our network admin. Let's say we want to configure a set of devices to allow access to a banking application. That will need configuration on switches, routers, firewalls, and load balances. The first step would be to validate the feasibility of the request. They then go through their organization silos to get the approvals from routing, switching, firewall, and load balancer teams. They then prepare configurations. Let's consider it as a multi-vendor network, multi-platform network, or even a case where they have hundreds of devices. They have to prepare configurations for all these devices. Once done, the configurations are again sent for approval to the different teams. Each time it goes for an approval, the process gets delayed by days or few weeks. Once the approval comes, the admins have to log in to each of the device and complete the configurations manually. Imagine the time they would take to complete this entire exercise. The cycle continues as they keep monitoring the network and more changes have to be done to rectify an issue that they would have discovered. This is quite an exhaustive process. And as a result, the network admin does not have time to focus on productive things. Automation is the only solution that will help them manage these repetitive complex tasks. Let's take a quick recap of what we have discussed so far. We saw the different vendors in the networking space like Cisco, Juniper, etc. We saw how the devices are accessed and configured. We also saw some of the existing processes and how these processes slows down the delivery times of a network admin. Thanks for watching.